Welcome on board of A350 MS3. This is the second prototype that is currently flying and on which we have um, a heavy flight test uh, installation. This aircraft is uh, going to be dedicated uh, to um, system test, engine, APU, braking, air conditioning and so on. Performances, low speed, high speed and uh, to other tests which require effectively a heavy installation. That's why the interior of the cabin is uh, quite different with respect to uh, um, an, an aircraft which is going to operate in an airline. It's a naked aircraft, it has its uh, charm because uh, sure there is no cabin, but at least you can see how the structure of the aircraft is and uh, what is behind uh, the fairings of the cabin. All the cables that you are able to see here and which are uh, orange colored or which have um, uh, an orange support are specific to this aircraft, to this uh, prototype aircraft. They are orange is the color of flight test and um, this means that all the items that you can see in orange inside, the cabin, inside this cabin are required to support the wires, either electrical or pneumatic, which are necessary to the functioning of the flight test installation. There are specific devices which are also installed inside the cabin and we are, that are taking a certain volume. For example, these devices that you can see here are called the load benches. Since we have no galleys in the cabin, there are no ovens, there is no in-flight entertainment, we are not able to um, uh, load completely the generator of the engines or of the APU. But for flight test purposes, we need to load them to the maximum and even above the maximum. That's why we have to simulate these uh, electrical loads by these devices, which are simple resistors that we are going to activate from the flight test engineer station and which are going to increase the load on each engine generator or on the APU generator up to the maximum and above the maximum. They are quite, um, quite cool for the time being, but as soon as we activate them, uh, consider that each engine generator has a 100 kVA electrical load. The cabin temperature is going to increase, so we have to manage all of these in order not to exceed the maximum, the maximum temperature inside, uh, inside the cabin. These other monuments that you are able to see here are devices that are going to support the flight test engineer station. There are uh, electrical components, there are pneumatic components, there are conver 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 convertitor, and, um, and so on. And all of these is going to support the recording of the parameters that we have on board. We have more or less 600,000 parameters which are recorded, so from the different computers in the aircraft or from the specific probes that we have installed, temperatures, accelerometers, uh, pressure probes, uh, strain gauges and so on. And uh, all these data are recorded in a specific hard disk. Uh, and most of them can be live monitored from this station. This is where I work. This is the flight test engineer station. From here, we have the possibility to display the various systems which are um, belonging to the aircraft. And also there are some pages, specific pages, that have been prepared by the flight test engineer all together with the engineers that are on ground that allows us to uh, facilitate the monitoring of the system behavior during a specific flight test. So we can monitor the parameters. Just to give you an idea, you can see here, for example, what is the information of the flight controls on the pages displayed to the pilots and on the page displayed to the flight test engineer. We have the possibility to plot parameters, as you can see on the lower screen, which allows us to see versus the time the behavior functioning on the various systems that we are testing. And uh, we have the same information as the pilots in the front in order to be able to uh, understand if they see something uh, wrong, some anomaly, and to be, let's say, on the, same, on the same understanding, on the same frequency. And afterwards, we have also cameras with which we can monitor the different parts of the aircraft. We can add other cameras, depending on the flight test that we have to perform, in order to um, have a look at what we are testing. For example, 
for the stall test where we where we put specific devices on the wing in order to characterize the aerodynamic flow. We have cameras that are installed on each side of the fuselage and that we are able to monitor live and that are going to be recorded also for post-flight data retrieval. From this station we have also the possibility to communicate with the various computers of the aircraft and we have, all, we have the possibility to change some of the laws that are inside these, um, these computers. For example, for example, we can decide to change the flight control laws. We can uh, um, increase the gains of some uh, schedules and to make an aircraft be more responsive or lazier or uh, more suitable to what the pilots identifies during the flight. Uh, it's not only the flight control computers that we can, uh, we can uh, control, but there are also the computers of the braking, of the air conditioning, of the um, uh, ventilation, uh, and, and, and so on. We cannot intervene directly on the engines. That's why there is a specific station that is uh, to Rolls-Royce, and um, where a Rolls-Royce engineer sits, and um, uh, from where he is capable to monitor the various parameters, more parameters than uh, what we can do, and he has the ability to intervene on the EEC, in order, which are the computers installed on the engines, in order to um, change, as we can do from our station, in order to change in flight the laws, the schedules of the, um, of the engine. For example, if we have to perform some transient test, some thrust response test, and we find that the engine acceleration is not suitable to our uh, targets, we have the possibility, after validation done on the bench, uh, to apply some trims, we call them trims, in order to boost the engine response. And this is a quite efficient tool, both for the engine and for the other systems of the aircraft that we can control from our station, in order to increase, to maximize the efficiency of the flight test. Because you can understand that in the frame of the same flight, we can test different schedules, we can te test different adjustments, and so in back-to-back, -back, have a live feedback on the acceptability of the tuning that afterwards will be inserted hard inside the software. All the other monuments that you can see here are specific to the flight test instrumentation. There are the recorders somewhere, there are the circuit breaker, the electrical supply, all these big, big, big stations that you have, um, you have seen in the back. We have here some compressors which are going to blow the pipes, the pneumatic pipes that are um, uh, uh, linked to the pressure probes that you have more or less everywhere in the aircraft, in the engines and all uh, the aerodynamic surfaces of the plane. For example, on the upper surface of the wing or of the horizontal plane. And we need this compressor to blow this measurement in order to avoid that they get contaminated or they get iced as soon as we cross some clouds or we are operating in uh, sandy conditions. Here you can see the load benches, the same that you have seen in the front. And uh, you can see also some seats that please uh, don't consider at all as a representative of the much more comfortable seats that we are going to have on A350. They are just uh, basic economic seats. Uh, even old, uh, old style that are installed here for our uh, uh, specialists as soon as we come, uh, we come abroad um, for, uh, for external missions.